going dark. We've stumbled upon Generic Shooter 3, requesting immediate extraction and a refund team. This mission is a critical failure. Over. <laughs> I was craving a first-person shooter when I noticed a rebooted version of Modern Warfare 3 released. So, I wanted to try this game for myself. As someone who finds a way to enjoy any COD game, I came to the conclusion from this one that the developers spent very little time on the campaign. The gameplay felt very lackluster, and so much felt cut out from the game resulting in an abrupt and anticlimactic story. You know what though? The story does have potential. Hey hey hey! Welcome to my channel everyone! I'm the Global Cherry and today we're going to try and fix the campaign story. Before we begin, subscribe, like the video, and enjoy the show! So you see, a story is set up in Modern Warfare 3, but there is no development to support it. No kapow factor. You're thrown immediately into the game as Nolan. Makarov's trusted comrade, and you help your commander escape from the gulag to terrorize more people. It would have been nice to have some context in this game before realizing I was Russian during the first segment. All stations, this is your commander, Vladimir Makarov. Call sign Tsar 90 Actual. I have the con. Move to phase 3. Out. It's been a while since I've played the remade Modern Warfare games after all. Another way the game would have been improved is if they focus on fewer character POVs with the ending in mind or make the campaign longer. Throughout the entire game, we played as Nolan, Farah, Price, Laswell, Samara, Soap, Gas, Ghost, and Graves. Due to the short campaign, it felt difficult to connect with them all in the story. For example, in the next part of the game, Farah was promising her friend Dina peace in Urzikstan before she was shot by Kony seconds later. Because of the irony and the abruptness of her death, I could not feel the loss of her friend. <laughs> Or maybe that's the point of war, you just feel numb to it all. After completing the entire campaign, I think it would be more effective for the narrative to concentrate solely on the perspectives of Gaz, Soap, and Price, creating a more focused story. With these perspectives, it would give the player an impression of how threatening Makarov really is. Price witnessed the effects of his chemical gas, remnants of it from Barkov's program before Gaz's rescue. Got it. Price and Farah prevent a missile from launching in the Kony station, knowing how deadly it is. Oh boy! Oh, you look terrifying! Run! Run, run, run! However, after failing to stop two more, Price warns Laswell, who happens to be in the Arklov's base, one of the missile's targets. Mission failed, boys. We'll get him next time. Laswell's stealth section in Arklov felt pointless because the developers could have done more to showcase her combat. By adding an optional firefight after her interaction with Volkov, she could show why she's the only agent tough enough to oversee the operatives of Task Force 141. The scene with some Mara was very effective. It showed how deceptive Makarov is in changing the narrative, making it seem like the ULF launched a terror attacks. <laughs> to disarm the bombs on Gora Dam should honestly be cut from the game. I wished he had a more meaningful role in the story beyond tediously disarming bombs. Maybe he really should have called an airstrike on Graves. Laswell, if you're tracking this, let's call an airstrike. Ghost, that is not nice. Apart from the POVs, not revealing Shepard and Graves on the call would retain suspense in the story. That call made it very obvious of Shepard and Graves' involvement with Makarov. Their 
offers no other explanation on how they obtained crucial info on Romanov. Instead, the team could receive a secret encoded message from an anonymous individual to look into Romanov's financial info. Then we would see the same scene between Makarov and Nolan about receiving help from Shadow and the captive, giving us suspicion on the source of our lead. After incapacitating Nolan in an apartment complex, we would then discover the mysterious prisoner being delivered to the abandoned prison complex in Siberia, Shepard himself. Then, as usual, Price will question what Shepard traded for his life. Shepard would then say that his job is making sacrifices for the greater good. What did you trade for your life? Not a goddamn thing. Bollocks. I'm a four-star United States general. And they kept you alive. You, as Price, will eventually wonder what was worth so much to Makarov to spare Shepard for. Makarov was ruthless after all, killing his comrade Ivan for not trusting his plan. The team also would discover that Graves is alive, but on Shepard's leash. The AC-130 mission as Graves would have been a bit better if we could also see the POV of the troops on the ground, infiltrating the hangar to destroy chemical gases. After that mission, Graves and Shepard accepted immediately that Makarov was dead. For a man who launched terror attacks, they didn't bother to check if they finished the job. It's over, John. We nailed that bastard to hell and gone. Yeah, that's what we said about your little shadow Graves, yeah? Makarov's dead, Captain. Don't let him live inside your head. Eagle out. Then, they ended up betraying each other when explaining their story to Congress. Lastly, the game did Soap's death very dirty, and the devs tripped on the roll credits button. Wait, this is the ending? Soap's death was supposed to be shocking, but the death was so abrupt that I was confused. While disarming a bomb with Soap as Price in a London tunnel, Makarov injured Price and shoots Soap in the head. Makarov is powerful, but Soap should have put up a good fight. So, we're going to try to rewrite the ending while sticking to the story. But this time, we'll also add the illusion of choice in it too. We've only had one option in this entire story after all, and that choice did not have any impact. Andre, who holds power in this gulag? The guards or the prisoners? The guards? Yes, Andre. The guards have it. Until we take it. Молодец, boy. Покажите это своим действиям. So picture this. Gaz's urgent warning echoes through the dimly lit tunnels as Price and Soap, fixated on disarming the bomb, remain oblivious to Makarov's approach. Price, be advised! Makarov is in the channel! He's heading your way! In the final moments of the bomb disarming, Makarov bursts onto the scene, firing at both Soap and Price in their left arms. Take this to hell with you, Captain. Never bury your enemies alive. After rescuing Price from being shot, a struggle ensues, with Soap managing to knock the gun from Makarov's hand and stabbing him in the shoulder, initiating a fierce hand-to-hand -hand combat. As the struggle intensifies, the gun finds its way to Price and in his POV, you can choose to shoot Makarov. Once you choose to shoot him, you will discover that the gun is empty. In horror, you witness the midst of the struggle where Makarov cunningly seizes Soap's knife and stabs him, leaving him critically wounded on the ground. As Soap struggles for his dear life, Makarov says a line from Verdangst four years ago, like, I told you I'd see you again, McDavish. I'll be seeing you again, McDavish. Ghost and Gaz, hearing the commotion, rush to the scene, and Makarov tries to escape. Price is then faced with a dilemma, chase Makarov or stay with Soap. If the player chooses to stay with Soap, Makarov escapes, but a poignant moment is shared between Soap and his comrades before his death. Gaz and Price will also disarm the apparent bomb, realizing it was a decoy, before hearing the real explosion go off in the distance. Alternatively, 
If Price decides to pursue Makarov, he realizes himself that the bombs in the underground vase were a diversion, a way for Makarov to deal with Task Force 141 before executing his true plans. An explosion echoes in the distance, and the game goes silent, setting the stage for future conflicts. Regardless of the choice, Makarov will be out there, continuing to provoke a war between the East and the West to restore Mother Russia to its former glory. Laswell reports Soap as KIA, leading to a somber funeral reflecting the emotional impact of his loss. <laughs> Price, with a heavy heart, ties up loose ends with Shepard, learning from his past mistake of sparing Makarov. Oh, I am not gonna beg for my life. Not from you, or anybody else, Captain. Wouldn't do you any good. And that is how I fix the campaign. My other way is locking the game in a gulag to ensure it will never see the light of day. But how did that turn out for Price? That is all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to subscribe, like the video, and comment what you thought of this video or the game itself. I'm curious about your thoughts. What could have made the 2023 Modern Warfare 3 game better? Thank you for watching, and that's all. This is Bravo 6, over and out.